everyone and welcome to today's installment of the Wolf Ecology Coffee uh, Vlog. My name is Peter Wolf, and today we're going to be talking uh, approaches to roasting decaf coffee. I guess the first thing to understand um, is that there are many different types of uh, decaffeination um, out there, uh, but effectively there's two specific sort of processes of decafing coffee. Um, we will have obviously uh, direct uh, solvent based um, con uh, or solvent based sort of laneway and a non solvent based uh, processing way and within each of those I guess there's different variations. On the non-solvent uh, based side of things we would have the water method uh, decaffeination or the carbon dioxide. Uh, we'll be uh, specifically talking about the water based method because um, that's what we use here in Wolf Roasters um, and we'll talk about how our approach to that uh, works. Um, I guess one of the things is that the de decaf has to be treated with a little bit more respect um, and a little bit more thought because you know it's a fairly large size to our market, uh, particularly here at Wolf Roasters and the amount of uh, decaffeinated coffee that we uh, sell and serve uh, to our wholesale partners and, uh, and home and retail consumers alike. Uh, we particularly uh, use uh, coffees uh, predominantly from either Mexico or Colombia is sort of our sort of preference uh, that we use because uh, we feel that that presents itself uh, with the best sort of flavour profile in terms of uh, that coffee. One of the challenges I think you have with roasting decaffeinated coffee is that initially the base colour that you start with, uh, it's typically because of the processing method, had a lot of its chlorophyll stripped from it, uh, so therefore it almost, it is a brownish sort of colour. Uh, and for those of you that you are know, familiar with um, aged coffees, um, it has that similar sort of look. Uh, so as a starting point for when you colour it uh, or trying to roast through the colour, it generally uh, looks and feels a little bit different. Uh, the coffee also, uh, I think, takes on the heat a little bit faster, and so it does roast a little bit quicker. And it's certainly a coffee that I like to use at the start of the day. Uh, my first and second roast of the day are typically when I like to use uh, to roast the decaf. And it's also when the roast is a little bit cooler. It also has a lower combustion point uh, as well, which we need to be careful of. And then particularly with some of the solvent-based processes as well, we're adding this chemical substance into sort of the uh, into the framework of roasting so this also has an effect in terms of the combustibility of the coffee uh, as we go further down the line and, uh, and roasting it. Uh, we do treat it the same in terms of our normal process, we do roast it up to a medium style roast um, and so but uh, maybe with a slower sort of drop temperature at the start and uh, a slightly sort of shorter development time as a, as a result, maybe 20 or 21 percent roast development time is what we would be looking for uh, at a medium sort of roast level. Um, we find that that really adds uh, some levels of, um, you know, some body and a little bit of that retained sweetness that we get into the coffee and, and, and some sort of residual sort of acidity. I don't find them overly acidic, I guess, uh, because I guess the processing method, uh, not unlike sort of monsoon coffees as well that one would do, uh, that it does sort of tend to strip some of the acidity out of the coffee. So I think that's why we tend to stick with the Mexicans and the Colombians, because if they have a high retained acidity uh, at the start as the green origin, uh, once it goes through the decaf process, uh, this tends to sort of bring it down. I think obviously from the brewing side of things, once it sort of hits, uh, hits our cafes, uh, definitely the best uh, result that one can achieve for the consumer is grinding fresh to order. So just having a simple, small little grind to order grinder, uh, if available, definitely makes a whole lot of difference to, uh, to uh, brewing and preparing that espresso, as opposed to obviously sending out a pre-ground um, decaf out into the market. But you know, we understand that you know, that's not also viable from a space or a financial point of view for some people. But we do see a very clear correlation for those cafes uh, who are using uh, ground to order, fresh ground to order decaf, we see that their volume per week is double and sometimes triple in most cases to those that we're sending out uh, pre-ground coffee. Uh, so I guess the decisions as a roaster come around price and you will find both the water method and the CO2 method uh, a little bit more expensive uh, as opposed to obviously the, the chemical or the direct and indirect uh, sort of processing methods for decaf. Uh, it definitely had, certainly you notice a smell between the two and quite frankly there's more of a chemical sort of uh, smell to the, the solvent based um, decafs than there is the non-solvent based decafs and I think you do have some of that 
retained sort of solvent based flavor almost it's not to me it almost is a little bit um, yeah slightly metallic and almost a bit sort of soap sudsy in its sort of flavor I think is is what's retained in terms of the solvent based decaf so I think there's uh, things to sort of think about. I think it's a very genuine sort of uh, a genuine area that needs to be considered uh, if you're roasting coffee uh, and as a coffee roaster. We're also seeing lots of our producers that we're working with and a particular shout out uh, to Edward Martinez and the team at Onyx Coffee. I know they're doing some things uh, around sort of, you know, sort of micro lots and specialty lot uh, decaf coffee of which we're sort of interested in procuring some. And when I did reach out to you, Edwin, they were all sold out, so hopefully on this current harvest coming up, near a, you know, a pallet or two uh, and bring it across and, and see what it's like. But you know, that's just my general thoughts. Uh, in terms of sort of instant, uh, we are looking at also producing um, in our next uh, quality of freeze-dried instant, we're looking at doing a uh, batch of uh, freeze-dried instant uh, decaf for you as well uh, that you'll be able to purchase on our online store. But like again, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're wanting to try and taste some of our uh, decaf coffee, you're more than welcome to uh, join and uh, uh, go to our online store. We do ship uh, not only uh, within Australia and New Zealand, but we do ship worldwide. Uh, thank you for watching and continue to subscribe. My name's Peter Wolf. Thank you.